Welcome back to another Making Sense of Coronavirus video. If you're new, if you just joined us for the first time, you're very welcome. Uh, this is a series of short interviews where we sit down with people from different backgrounds, different places, and talk about life in a coronavirus world. We discuss what hope there is, what help there is for us as we live through these days of global pandemic. Now, you're very welcome to join us. This week, I had the privilege of sitting down with Matthew and Alison Thomas. Matthew and Alison live on the Wirral with their two children. They're both working and schooling from home. One of the big things they spoke about was missing community uh, during these days of restrictions. And here's what they had to say as we sat down together. Well, Matthew and Alison, thank you very much for joining us. It's great to have you with us. Uh, Matthew and Alison are in the, the Wirral. Um, Matthew, you work for Unilever, is that right? Yeah, yeah, no, I'm still, I'm still there, Simon. So I'm uh, one of the sort of research managers at their lab in Port Sunlight, looking after everything to do with uh, laundry liquids, how we can make things clean better, smell better, all the, all the rest of it. So that's, that's what I'm supposed to be doing in the day. So, so most of us would probably use something that you... I would hope so. I would hope you've used uh, Purcell or Surf at some point. And if you haven't, then I can highly recommend it. <laughs> it's always good for my pay packet. So yes, that's, uh, that's what I'm working on. I think there's a box you have to tick on YouTube for product placement. So we might just have... A <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes, we should. Mm -hmm. uh, and Alison, tell us a little bit about yourself, what you do with your time. Uh, so I'm a mum. Uh, to uh, Evan who's five and Fionn who's three and I also work part-time for a Christian charity. I work, well I usually work in the office uh, and I do the books and uh, the kind of behind the scenes and um, charity stuff. Um, yeah. Great and um, it's great to have you uh, with us. Uh, tell us a little bit about, for you, life in lockdown. What that, what's that been like? And um, what have been maybe the, some of the big challenges? Has there been unexpected joys you've found? Tell us a little bit what things the last couple of months have been like. So there's definitely been, been both. Um, uh, yeah, we're both, both working and uh, neither of us are key workers. So uh, we're not getting childcare for free. Uh, we are both able to work from home, so we are expected to try and do some or most of our hours. So lockdown for us has been a combination of juggling, keeping the house in one piece, keeping our jobs going and teaching the kids something and just stopping them from killing one another, basically. Um, so yeah, it's been a juggling act of, of those three things. Um, and I think as we thought and, and, and pondered on it, it's it's been I guess like this for a lot of people but it, ha it has been tiring and I guess it's, it's just wearying us is the, the word because there's, there's almost not much chance for a break there's no respite one day seems to roll into the next as it were so that's been uh, very much a marathon not a not a sprint for us that's one of the general general hardships yeah yeah if, if I'm not with the children I'm working or I'm cooking or I'm sleeping um and that's about the yeah. other options. And you kind of you <laughs> kind of forget just how, yeah. how limited the attention span of a three year old is till you have them round yeah. all the day and uh, all the time. Yeah. And it's, it's um, yeah, it certainly makes you appreciate teachers more and how they manage to get so much work out of a five year old. Yeah. And what we yeah. really struggle to do. So. Um, and the other thing that we found really hard is not being able to share life with people. Um, yeah. We're we're both sociable. Um, we love seeing our church family. Um, we have an open door policy in our house. Um, we always have at least one or two friends over in the week. Um, one even cooks tea for us. Yeah. Um, and we're really missing the company of our friends and our family and missing going to our toddler group and sharing life and burdens and you know frustrations with other yeah, moms it's been, and that it's been hard isn't it because community and fellowship like we'd often have people for lunch after church on sunday and things and of course that's all that's all stopped now and it's been been hard because we're not yeah. seeing them um and and you know they're not seeing the kids and the kids aren't seeing other people so much so it's it's been tough yeah um but i think there's been there have been some positives in a lockdown yeah. um i think um 
we have really enjoyed having more time together, albeit it's not necessarily quality time, but we've had some good quantity time together as, as a family. Um, and actually one bit of quality time we have managed to do is, is I've, well, both of us have been fairly strict in saying, right, okay, we're not gonna take any phone calls or any meetings at lunchtime. So we are having lunch together as a family, which has been it's really, really nice. Um, and if we're honest, I think for the first time in a long while, if ever, we, we've got into a good run of doing a sort of family devotional. So there's a, uh, a Christian band for, for kids called Awesome Cutlery, who our kids uh, love. They've got a, yeah. a few little books talking through some basic Christian truths for the kids. And we've been doing that every day for probably the past four or five weeks now. I think, yeah, every day in um, lockdown, basically. At lunchtime. And the kids are yeah. enjoying it. We're enjoying doing it with them. So we are grateful to God that we've had that, that resource, that opportunity, and that we've stuck with it and the kids have stuck with it. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah, it's been good. Yeah, that's been great. Mm, that sounds wonderful. So joys in the midst of all the challenges. And yeah, yeah, mm. glimmer of hope. <laughs> So tell us a little bit, you kind of started talking a little bit about kind of being Christians and the difference that makes. Tell us a little bit, kind of, I suppose, particularly as you meet these challenges, we do live in a world at the moment that is kind of filled with lots of challenges maybe we've never faced in our lifetime. Tell us a little bit about what, for you being a Christian, what difference that's made in the ways you've faced these challenges. Um, there we go. Um, yeah, okay. Um, so knowing that God is in control, that he's in charge, he's the king, and he's kind, means that we don't need to be anxious. Yeah. And um, of course we're aware of the headlines and we're aware of why we're doing this, but COVID-19 is not um, a fear for us. We don't need to be anxious because we have, we have hope in the face of death. Um, but if also, if I'm honest, if it feels like it's an issue going on out there, yeah. um, for us very much more, the immediate concern for us is, is lockdown yeah. and the impact of lockdown on us, um, as individuals, as a family, right. um, as the community, um, in our neighborhoods, um, seeing the effect of lockdown on my single parent friends yeah. um my single friends s seeing all of that um and trying to understand what god is doing um in that we're grateful that none of this has taken god by surprise yeah he knew it was going to um, happen yeah and he has a purpose <laughs> through it all um and he's definitely teaching us um, through this. And yeah, there've, there have been certain stages that have been really hard. So um, at the beginning, when we both had to bring our work home and I thought, well, okay, we can cope with this as long as the schools stay open. Yeah, yeah, we had a few, and then a few days, yeah. <laughs> And the school shut yeah. and you're know, like well we can be okay with this you know as long as I can still see a friend and you know and lockdown got stricter and um I can you know I can be okay with this as long as I can go for a run <laughs> and I've injured my foot and um so I haven't been able to go out for a week and that's been really hard mm. and then oh, it's okay, I can cope with this as long as it doesn't go on for too long. Yeah. And then, of course, we had an announcement on Sunday um, from the Prime Minister that just wasn't what we wanted to hear. Yeah. And it's just made me realise this is going to go on not just for a few more weeks, but for many months. And so it's, it's, it's each time I've tried to kind of put a crutch down, like, it's okay as long as yeah. um, God has whipped it away. Well, that's what it feels like. Um, but what is he teaching me? He's, I think what he's teaching me is that true contentment um, can only be found in him. Nothing in this world is um, is reliable no. <laughs> or or promised, um, but only him. And so leaning on him and trusting him, trusting that he is in charge, trusting that he is in kind, that he is kind, 
um, and that he can can work through this. Um, and that he will sustain us. And really. that he will sustain us and that he will um, sustain our community and the people that I love, the people that I can't see, the people that I feel so helpless. Um, because I just don't, I don't have the time or the energy um, to, to do the things that I used to be able to do. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. If we, you know, I feel like my hands are tied and almost trapped. I, oh, yeah, trapped, I guess, because we're so busy with work and the children. And, and those are good things. And learning to appreciate those more. Um, but, but it's also yeah. it's also a wisdom call isn't it I think you know we, we've acknowledged mm -hmm. look that we can't do everything we we could do previously so we've mm -hmm. we've really had to make protocols I at times am envious of some of my old university friends who are perhaps single on furlough and they're saying oh, this is great I'm learning a new language for the next month or whatever it may be and having a great time with a new hobby and we're not in that situation yeah. God has not put us there he's put us here um, but actually I think we've realized look we can't do everything and uh what it yeah. has taught us and is is teaching us our church family is really important mm -hmm. and so i think what's something we have tried and are keeping time for is keeping in touch with church family because i think we know as christians that that's a really important thing yeah. um just as we keep in touch with our, our parents either the kids grandparents mm -hmm. you know it is as important for us to to be keeping in touch with with church family and that has been that has been a real a real comfort um, mm -hmm. and a source of strength i think as, we, as we're yeah. going through this and so god's yeah. reminding us that that's that's one way he he helps us is he uses us to help each other um in, in, in times like this yeah yeah and then finally i guess something that's come up in the devotionals we've been doing with the children actually recently thinking about you know, who are we looking forward to seeing once all of this is over? And, you know, Evan just can't wait to see his best friend, Joseph. Yeah. So I just can't wait to give Joseph a hug. And, you know, it just breaks your heart. <laughs> and, yeah. um, but, but as Christians, we are people of longing. We are not just longing <laughs> for the day when we can be reunited with the people outside, but we're longing for the day when Jesus returns and everything will be made better. Um, and we will be fully and completely and forever united together um, before Jesus. And perhaps this period now is teaching us and growing us in that kind of recognition of our longing. Mm. I'm so grateful that this house is not my home um, because this house is hard work, mm. but my home is in heaven. And that is a great source of comfort um, and something that helps me keep going and reminds me that actually if this house is a mess it doesn't matter yeah. Yeah, exactly <laughs> exactly it's only temporary it's only temporary yeah yeah well, thank you um that's, that's wonderful to to hear and um so tell us a little bit your kind of family life for you kind of Family life is a mess, isn't it, so often? And yeah. Don't yeah. get tidied up the way you'd often like them to. Yeah. Um, there's always toys I stand on. When yeah. In bed. Yeah. Um, yeah. Those yeah. are the for you as parents. So there have been particular lessons that you've been learning uh, through this time as parents. I know uh, for you, kind of Matthew, particularly mentioning kind of lunchtime with the children, something you've not really had before. But no. I, you know, what are some of the lessons you've learned uh, as parents? Yeah, I, th I think that's that's been a great thing. I I think one of the other big ones has been to be more patient uh, with the kids. I, I never considered myself to be impatient, but I think lockdown has, has kind of shown me up, as it were. Um, I have, I mean, yeah, I have yeah. got quite impatient with the kids uh, several times, whether it's because I've just come off a difficult forward work or because, as you say, Simon, there's just stuff on the floor again or because I've been woken twice in the night by Fiona. Um, and yet God's just been showing me more and more that actually, no, I, I need to, to love them for what they are, a five-year-old and three-year-old, lovely children that we've been blessed with. And you know what? It, it doesn't matter if we had grand ambitions on day one of getting through everything that had been set from school, and, and now we'd be lucky if we do kind of a third of it or whatever. Because the grand scheme of things, it matters much more that 
our relationship with them is good yeah. that they're learning about the lord above all else so as i say that's why we're thrilled about the lunchtime devotionals yeah. um and that yeah we have to see it for the for the long term and 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 i think god is slowly but surely working in us to make us more more patient as parents to remember that our our responsibility in bringing them up uh, to know the lord and to be good adults in due course is something that takes time um, so yeah so i think it's meant we're more relaxed therefore for what the kids do do in the day uh, how much we do use the third parent of the tv at times um, yeah. so just yeah i think it's made us a little more relaxed in that respect great well, thank you that's good to hear kind of i suppose you got priorities is help you to see priorities maybe more clearly is that can arise this led yeah. to yeah yeah i think so i think so yeah. because i so said we, we we acknowledge we can't do everything and even yeah. putting the kids education into the right perspective has been a, a hard but a good a good thing to do yeah. yeah and you've mentioned obviously family and your kind of immediate family of parents and things but you mentioned also that church, church family is something kind of quite important to you tell us a little bit about what being part of a church family has meant to you um, through this time so i think um it's a great reminder that the lockdown isn't uh, only just about us and, and the mm. four of us here and, and, and these kind of four walls that, that we're in. Mm. Um, it's been a great reminder that, you know, we still have our brothers and sisters in Christ. Uh, in the church we're at across the age spectrum from kind of 84 down mm. to six months old or whatever. Um, and that our church family are still there. We can't see them face mm. to face at the moment, but um it's yeah god's reminded us that no yeah. they, they still matter a lot and mm. i think one of the things we have kept in touch through the sunday services like yourselves on, on on zoom but also through our midweek home group and bible study evenings and things um and and it's been great because we've really uh had a lot of encouragement and drawn a lot of strength from some time with them when we've looked at the bible with them and prayed with them and we've had mm. prayers for us i think last um last night we were on with home group and, and, and one of the older ladies, Beryl, she said, I'm going to pray for Matthew and Alison before we even sort of said that we're feeling tired. No, she said, you look, you look tired. And I'm worried it's hard for you, hard for you with the kids. Yeah. So, so, faces. yeah, so, so, so we're grateful for the support that we've been given. And as yeah. I say, God's reminded us that um, our family is not just in these, these four walls, that it's yeah. the broader church. Yeah. Not being able to see church has been one of the hardest things yeah. and the first Sunday that we all well we gathered around our tv yeah. and <laughs> and um joined in with the service I ugly cried yeah. all the way through the I'm whole thing <laughs> I, 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 I think I'm the wet. reality of it just hit you um and it's really hard church family have been so good to us our extended family don't live nearby so they've always been very precious to us and supported us and um and i think it's not till it's been taken away that we've realized just how much we've relied on them yeah um as parents to help they help us bring up our children and they help us survive yeah. um and yeah. so to have that kind of taken away has been really hard um but praise god for technology um praise god that we can still zoom um and meet up with people and you know sunday service helps us remember what day of the week it is yeah, <laughs> yeah it does. It does. um but also yeah we connect with the outside world and um and yeah we connect with um the people that we're going to spend eternity with um and yeah talk about jesus together which is great That's wonderful. So it sounds like church really is is a family um, for you. Yeah, yeah. No, def definitely. I think, um, and it's one of the things, as I say, even though we've been, we feel very busy, and there's 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 more to be done, and that we want to do them than we have time for. Mm. That actually, I think, because we already had it in our routine that okay, Sunday morning we were with church, and, and one night a week we'd have a you know a home group Bible study and things. Uh, there's a, a guy who's not long become a Christian who I've been reading the Bible with a little bit one on one. All these things are sort of already there, and so as we've gone into lockdown, we've gone well. Actually, let's keep that in, and mm. um, and we have been able to do that, and it's been a real, real blessing to us because just to connect, as you say, Simon, with what is our extended family, 
um, has been um, has been a really good thing, a source of source of encouragement and and yeah, if I'm honest, a break as well from the the, the, the petty little struggles or the big struggles or whatever it may be we have here. It's just been refreshing to to look outside of ourselves for a bit. And as you said earlier, we've actually both been able to make hen group. Yes, <laughs> yes, is... yes. The last nice. few weeks we've both, we've both been there. That's been one of the good things about the technology. You know, because uh, home groups often at different people's houses. Well, that doesn't matter now when you're on Zoom. So, yeah, it's been good. Mm, great. Well, I think we'll, we'll leave things there. Um, Matthew and Alison, thank you so much for, for joining us. It's been great to, to hear uh, about you and that you're surviving in life in lockdown. Uh, and also just the blessing that kind of church family and your Christian faith has been to you and keeping you going through these times. So thank you very much. No worries. It's great to see you too. Yeah. God bless, Simon. Thank you. Thank you so much for joining us. It's been wonderful to have you with us. There's going to be more of these videos coming out in the near future, so do keep your eyes out for those. If in the meantime you'd like to explore a little bit more or perhaps to speak to somebody, you can do that through our website. The details of that will be up at the end of this video. There's lots of resources there and the opportunity to get in touch with us. So do head over to the website if you're interested in that. You're also very welcome to join us on a Sunday morning. Every Sunday morning we have a live stream service at half past ten on YouTube and the details of that are also up on the website or on our Facebook page so do keep an eye out for those as well. But it's been lovely to speak to you again and I look forward to speaking to you again soon. Goodbye. <laughs>